Hello guys, welcome back to LineApp. For today's video, we are going to show you how to use Scenario AI. So if you're interested, let's start tutorial. So if you're looking for a way for generate assets for your video games or even for personal use, well, Scenario AI here could help you a lot. Now in this case, first thing we need to do here is we need to go to their website, which is going to be Scenario.com. And usually at the top right of your screen, you should see a login or sign up button. Now in this case, go ahead and click on the sign up or logged in. But once you've logged in, you should be able to see the main UI here. So as you can see, this is going to be the home homepage here. Now there are going to be a few things that you can see here. Like for example, the characters, backgrounds, badges, isometric buildings, vehicles, and a lot more. So since a lot of people are actually using this platform, there's going to be a lot that you can see here. Now also, we also have the AI toolkit here, which in this case, you could train your own model. You could blend, generate, design, pixelate, isolate, upscale, and vectorize. Now, in this case, these tools are going to be something really helpful. Like, for example, if you're making a pixel game, well, vector, uh, vectorize here or the pixelate option here could help you a lot on creating those assets. Now, they also have tutorials here, which in this case are very short tutorials that you could use for creating your own. So making consistent assets for your game or for personal use. Now, they also have the Get Inspired page here, which in this case is going to give you inspiration on what you could generate, what are the possibilities that you could get from the platform itself. Now, in this case, how do we actually get started? So for us to get started here, we first have to generate our image. So to do that, we could go ahead and click on the generate button here or at the left side here, you could go to images. Now on the next page, you should be able to see the images section and just click on generate images at the top right. And from here, you'll be able to choose a model that you want to use. So we have the platform models here, community models and foundation models here as well. Now, for now, we are going to use a model here that we want to use. So maybe you want to use table diffusion here. So let's go ahead and use this one. And from here, we need to input some things into our uh, generation. So first is the prompt. So prompt is going to be used as uh, something that would be the basis of the generation itself. So depending on what you actually add here or what prompt that you actually add here, it's going to basically uh, depend or going to base on that. Like for example, I use the prompt spark here as an example. So maybe I want to use a towering cityscape adorned with neon lights here. And from here, you can go ahead and click on generate immediately. But if you want to add more details on it, like for example, if you have negative prompts, so negative prompts are used to basically re uh, remove or basically avoid some certain aspects on it. Like for example, you don't want dogs included on it. So make sure that you indicate that no dogs are included here or birds or any other uh, explanation or anything that you don't want to see in your generation. So make sure that you explain it here properly. Now we also have the reference image here, but if you want to, uh, have a reference image that I want to have this specific look. Well, you could upload that image and the engine itself or the model itself is going to base on that image. Now we also have these settings here. So we have the number of images that we could generate here. So maybe you only want want one image here. The sampling steps here, which includes sampling steps, balance image details, and processing time in AI models. Dimension here, which is the size I mentioned of our image. The guidance here, which is higher values keep images closer to the prompt. So the higher it is, the closer it is to the prompt itself. So if you leave this to very high, it's going to basically leave no room so much for uh, creativity of the AI model itself. So keeping it at the very middle here is something really great. So maybe I want to say it's going to be around 10. So we want to make it a lot closer than it is and to just and just enough to leave room on for for the ai to create insert creativity on it we also have the schedule here so i'm not going to change uh, a lot of things here we could choose the default settings here as well now for now let's just click on generate here to start our generation so it might take some time as you can see it's currently queued so since we're just using the free plan here there's going to be low priority on our quest here but in their uh current 
uh, plan that they have right now. So let's just click on upgrade plan here. There are certain plans that you could use here. Like for example, Essential here, which is $99 a month or seed. So you have priority processing here, 500 images, image editing, priority training, standard support. So since we're only using a free plan here, which is the larger plan here, we only have limited features on it, like low priority processing. So processing your images here might take some time. Now, as you can see, since we've already generated our image, you can go ahead and click on that image and you can start refining it or restart your generation or edit in Canvas. So what are those things that is available here? So also on the right side here, you also have the vectorize, pixelate, upscale, and isolate. So in this case, the refine here is a way for you to, from the name itself, is to refine your image. You also have your start generation, which in this case is going to restart the regeneration and edit in Canvas, which in this case, you could basically edit your image here. Isolate means that you're going to remove the background. Upscale is uh, add or enhance the details on that specific image. Pixelate is from the name itself, pixelated. Also vectorize here from the name itself again, vectorize. Now maybe if you want to edit your canvas here, just to give an example, just click on it in the canvas. And we not want to enter our name here, the model, and just click on create. And from here, we are now going to start editing our image. Now in this case, there are a few things that you can change here. Like for example, we want to um, easy, uh, basically highlight the certain aspects on it. Like for example, this one, go ahead, highlight that and add something in our prompt here. Like maybe I want to say add a rocket here. And from here, we could go and click on generate here. And depending on where you highlight your text here, it's going to basically add that prompt or generate something for us on that specific location. As you can see, it's going to start generating. Again, you just need to wait for it to start or finish generating here. But once it generates, you should be able to see or choose from the following options. So let's just choose this one or maybe wait for it to finish. So maybe I want to use this one, just an example. It's not that accurate since I didn't provide any details on it. So adding details on it could actually, um, or increasing your prompt or making your prompts a lot uh, more descriptive could make your images a lot more uh, better or make your images a lot better. So in this case, as you can see, we were able to add that. And uh, from here, uh, you could go ahead and uh, basically start using it as you would. So as you can see, this is the generated uh, text or image that we have right now. So yeah, so using this one is actually pretty easy. If you want to revert this one, you can go ahead and revert it. As you can see, we're reverting anything that we did before. So yeah, so that's how you use Scenario AI here and that's about it. So hopefully this video was able to help you like and subscribe to Yelan app. Thank you for watching.